idea. Get your granville to fetch your cloth. I'm doing this. What makes you think I can be in two places at once? Your trouble is you're sometimes not even in one place at once. <laughs> Come on, I clean this. It's, it's filthy. Look at it. There's enough dirt on there to fill the black hole of Cacalcaco, the black hole of the cap, the black, the black hole of the hanging gardens of Babylon. <laughs> Bad. No, it's just me body. My <laughs> nerves are still in bed. How do you manage to get up every morning at this time? I have to. I've got to earn me living again now I'm divorced. Oh, you're divorced? Yeah, a year ago. I'm all on my own again. Oh, all on your own. That big house, eh? <laughs> no one to talk to. All those empty, echoing beds. I mean, rooms. <laughs> well, not exactly. I'm living with me mum and dad. Then there's our Kenny and our Vera. You remember our Vera? Call that living on your own. You know what I mean. Why is it every female I meet is always surrounded by relatives? There's no way you can ever go and have a quiet uh, discussion. <laughs> well, there must be somewhere. No, not outdoors. Not this time of year. Well, why don't you invite a girl to your place? No, he's always in. He can't be here all the time. You must be joking. The last time he spent a whole night away from here was in 1957. 1957? Mm. Where did he go? Have his appendix out. <laughs> he wouldn't do it for him while the shop was shut on a Sunday. Well, why is he so opposed to going away? Because he's got all his money stashed away inside. He's guarding the world's most valuable oxo tin. <laughs> well, why don't you tell him there's more to life than... Money. Hmm. Don't you think I'd better wait until I've found out what it is? <laughs> oh, come on, Granville, don't give me that. I bet you've been around. Oh, yes, I've been around. <laughs> I've been around here till nine o'clock at night. <laughs> yeah, by the time I'm finished, all the talent's either fixed up, washing its hair, or gone to bed. You poor love. What you need is a sympathetic married woman. <laughs> or better still, a sympathetic ex-married woman. A crash. A bottle of milk. Oh, thank God for that. I thought for the moment it sounded like an, an escaping oxo tin. <laughs> How can you uh, sleep standing up? I'm not sleeping. I'm dreaming. You think life has passed you by. Then all of a sudden something magical happens. And you find yourself... <laughs> ..sweeping up broken milk bottles. <laughs> There's no excuse for tight jeans at her age. It's just willful. She's always been inclined towards... <laughs> you know. Yeah, well, she certainly gets through a lot of aspirin. Yes, I'm not surprised. The only one I blame is her mother. Her mother had the American army during the war. <laughs> not all of them, I trust. <laughs> you'd have thought so if you'd lived next door. And it wasn't as though she was good-looking. I mean, she had a face like a fit. That's true. Though, mind you, I can't quite think what it would have fitted. <laughs> Her features never seemed to know the value of teamwork, did they? Well, ugly or not, she certainly wore out a few Len Miller records. You could hear them playing in the mood and jive into all hours. 
There wasn't a weekend past you couldn't find one unconscious in the garden. Unconscious? What had she done with them? Never you mind. Stop here, Wiggins. And there she was, loading it up with her nylons and peanut butter. Is it any wonder her daughter's the same? She was seen in a parked car down Cobbett's Lane. I know. Now someone recognised her shoes through the window. <laughs> And they do say that second child isn't his, but he doesn't care. As long as he's got the strength to blow the froth off another barmaid. <laughs> and a 10p change, Mrs. Bear Bear Blue It. Greg Granville, open the, open, the, open the door for me, for, for me and me, me, me. Oh, you've done it all good. <laughs> and you want to keep away from strong drink and bad women? <laughs> And what's more important, keep away from her, but bad drink, you strong women. I do keep away. There's no one round here more successful at it. If the Duke of Edinburgh gave an award for having nothing to do with women, I'd win second prize after Larry Grayson. <laughs> well after. <laughs> you ought to get about more. You know, have the odd night off. If you put all the magistrates in this country nose to tail, I wonder if they'd finally get a clearer view of their responsibilities. <laughs> Don't you ever feel like a bit of a holiday? Hmm? The Workers' Revolutionary Party claims that there are concentration camps ready and waiting all over this country. They must mean they're the butlins. <laughs> You're not getting any younger. Who, me? Yes, you. Do you think you're going to live forever? Well, I'm going on to have a damn good try, aren't you? <laughs> There's a whole great world outside, just passing us by. No, not all of them don't pass us by. Some of them poke their heads in the shop and hand them a money over the counter. Money? That's all you think about, money. Listen to him. I've raised an atheist. Look, <laughs> you ought to get away for a night. Oh, yes, and leave you here with my my oxo tin, you who don't believe in anything. Eh? I do. I believe in lots of things. No, you don't. You're, a, you're an infidel. No, I'm not. I believe in, you know, music and art and literature. You, you don't believe in anything real, do you? Yeah, they're, they're real. No, they're not. No, they're not. Not to us. They're only real to people. People like teachers who don't have to work for a living. <laughs> uh, you hear that little tinkle? That, that's real. That's real. A little bit more for the Oxo team. Go on, go fetch it. Good dog, Rover. <laughs> Morning, Granville. You ought to put your foot down. What? Oh, do you both good. What would? A change. What are you talking about? Do you know how long it's been since he last had a night away from here? 1957. There you are, you see. He even brags about it. You're right, of course. I should get him out more. Otherwise, if we get married, I'll never see daylight. <laughs> That's right. You could start slow, you know, with maybe the one night away sometime. Yeah, but when? Oh, I don't know. What about tonight? <laughs> Do you call that starting slow? Do I can watch the shop? No. Mind, tomorrow is my day off. And if we could get him out of here sometime this afternoon, we'd have all tomorrow as well. You'd have to be firm with him. It'd be a terrible shock. <laughs> But our cat could sleep in and see to me mother. But will you be all right here on your own? Well, I'm not absolutely certain, but I, I think I'm in with a real chance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd have a better take a clean one of everything. But what is everything? I mean, what do you need for a night out as an engaged per person? And they're not necessarily what you thought you were going to need before she insisted on separate rooms. <laughs> Call me, she said. That's what she said, call me, with the distinct implication that the minute I put the phone down, she'd be round. I'm in. I'm in. You're in, Granville. You're in. <laughs> My God, it's about time. <laughs> Why do we need two rooms? What's the point of being an engaged person if you can't economise a bit? <laughs> I mean, everyone knows engaged persons only become engaged persons so they can uh, do their bit to economise a bit. <laughs> all over the country, there must be hotels full of engaged persons, all busily doing their bit. <laughs> oh. 
I hope she'll be gentle with me. Of <laughs> course she will, of course she will. Don't be a fool. She's been married. She knows about these things. Just take your time. I want this to be a deeply moving experience. I mean, it's a crucial watershed in a person's life. A unique blend of gentleness and violence with just a hint of danger. <laughs> Reminds me, I must remember to wear my St. Christopher medal. <laughs> now, a clean pair of pyjamas in case I should inadvertently just stumble upon the wrong room. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I'll wear them a polka dot ones I had for Christmas, that's it. <laughs> oh, oh no. No, I shall look like a woodpecker with acne. <laughs> In the space of an hour, how can I turn this into a place fit for a milk woman to live in? <laughs> Mind you, there's no guaranteeing that she'll come round. What if she's washing her hair? Hey, you're not taking that ratty old case. A ratty old case? Hey, look at it. I've hardly ever used that case. What do you mean? It's falling to pieces. Ah, oh, well, I've got an ingenious little device to combat that. Oh, yeah, where? Here. It's called a hairy string. <laughs> <laughs> you don't imagine that Nurse Gladys Emanuel, in all her finery, is going to be seen out with you with a thing like that? Well, I had given that uh, some thought. Yes. yes, well, I'm glad. Yes, and I've come to the conclusion that if I dare drape me raincoat over my arm, it'll hardly show at all. Oh, I see. So you're not going to get a new one, then? No, not for her separate rooms. I'm not getting a new one. I don't know what's come over her. I mean, you just think you're set up for a, a normal working day, then suddenly in she barges, looking like a, a, a very attractive heavy goods vehicle. <laughs> And then suddenly you're going out for the night. I mean, wh what brought it all up? Oh, I don't know, just a whim, I fancy. Anyway, don't you worry. You go off and enjoy yourself. You know, I'll look after my end. Yeah, that, that's what's worrying me. <laughs> While you're here looking after your end, who's looking after the sh shop? I'm looking after the shop. Suppose there's a crisis. A crisis, a crisis. Look, it's only a shop, it's not a jumbo jet. Listen to him. Only a shop, he says. Only a shop. How can I leave it with someone who t t takes that attitude? Aha! The infamous, dreaded Oxo pin. <laughs> <laughs> Go, it's heavy, isn't it? Eh? Keep your voice down. Someone might hear you. Hmm? Yeah, why is it so heavy? Well, you see, it's not only for paper money in there, there's a few old coins as well. Well, they're, they're solid silver before the 1922, you know. You're not taking that lot away with you, are you? I'm not leaving it here, that's for sure. You can't take a terrible old thing covered in dents and scratches for a night out with your fiance. Well, I'm, I'm going to. And I'm, I'm taking my oxo tin and all. <laughs> It's too heavy. Yeah, it's not. Pe -pe 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 -pe. Oh, it can't. <laughs> the handles can come off now. <laughs> oh, do you have a good mind to take this case back to where I bought it from? <laughs> Trouble is, they were bombed out during the war. <laughs> yeah, Granville, I, I can't find a damn thing in here. Granville. Huh? What are you looking for? My money belt. I can't find me my money belt. Money belt? I didn't know you had a money belt. Never seen you wearing a money belt. Look, of course you haven't seen me wearing a money belt. You're not supposed to see people wearing money belts. They're supposed to be a secret, aren't they? <laughs> you don't wear them outside your sports jacket, do you? <laughs> Kept it a secret, all right. It's news to me. I thought you just wore your old Oxo tin. <laughs> don't you be cheeky. Now, come on, help me find it. I know it's here. I've never seen it. Right. When? Well, I saw it last... Uh, well, uh, a few... Uh, well, it must have been... It's, it's, it's 1957. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, well, I, I wore it last time, you see, when I went to have my appendicitis out. Do you know I haven't moved from this house since then? I know that. Well, what's it look like? Well, it looks like a money belt. It's got this little nick in it where this uh, damn fool surgeon caught it with his scalpel. <laughs> Never wore it on the operating table, did you? I had to. They, they don't let you stay awake. 
I'm surprised they didn't rip it off you. Oh, no, you see, that's the beauty of this little bear, bear, bear beggar. You can't rip it off because it's got steel wires in it and you lock yourself into it with a key, you see. <laughs> you don't care how you throw your money around, do you? Eh? Oh, here it is, here it is. There it is, look, I've got it, there it is, look. <laughs> Where are you going to wear that? Round one leg? <laughs> you put weight on since then. You'll never get into that. Oh, yes, I will. I'll, uh, well, I'll ha you just have to j jiggle things a bit. <laughs> Super Sheen. Yes, I like Super Sheen. Ah, good. Another satisfied customer. <laughs> Mind you, I like Sunset Silk as well. <laughs> You never find it easy to make me mind up. Have you noticed that? Yeah, you're well known for it in the area, Mavis. Do you mind if I make a suggestion? Oh, I don't know, really. I couldn't listen to anything my husband wouldn't approve of. No, no, I didn't mean anything. On the like... other hand, even if you're married, my feeling is you're still a person. <laughs> then I could be wrong. How did you happen to get married, Mavis? You know, when you had to say yes or no. How did you make your mind up then? <laughs> told him I'd think about it. Oh, well, it's not actually making your mind up, is it? I mean, what was it about him? I liked his clean fingernails. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right. But, I mean, it's a very important decision, isn't it? Eh? So, you know, what finally decided you to say yes or no? I thought I was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and were you? No. <laughs> You were going to make a suggestion to me, Granville. Hmm? Of course, you don't have to if you don't want to. I'll understand. No, no, I was just going to suggest about the uh, shampoo, you know. Oh, oh, the shampoo. Ah. Oh, but shall I need the one for dry hair or normal hair? you got normal hair. Oh, do you think so? Oh, yes. I've got the most normal hair of anybody I've ever met in my entire life. Oh, Granville. Oh, Mavis. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> That, that'll be a 16p, thank you, Mavis. Will there be anything else today? Uh, no. Oh. No, thank you, Mr Arkwright. Thank you. Maybe, maybe, Mavis, it's yours, it's mine. Well, I can't stand here all day. <coughs> just, uh, you know, just seeing what uh, shampoo suited her best. Oh, yes. Mm. Well, let's hope she doesn't wear a pop in for bath salts. <laughs> What's up with you? Eh, uh, well, it's, it's a bit... It's a bit nippy in here. I don't find it chilly at all. No, no, it's, it's, it's nippy in the money belt. The money belt's nippy in here. Oh, I think you're right. I think I have put, uh, put on a, a couple of pounds since I wore it last. I told you it'd be too small for you. Come on, sit down if you can't walk No, no, I've, I've tried that. That's worse. <laughs> it's the, it's the, it's the uh, coins that make your, your eyes water. <laughs> all coins in there as well, have you? Well, they're, they're solid silver before 1922, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, no, I know exactly where they are now, under lock and key. I like to know that, and when I try to sit down a bit careless, my God, I'm, I'm reminded. <laughs> <sighs> well, you can't take the nurse out walking like that. <laughs> oh, <I'll be> <laughs> I'll soon get the hang of things. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd better rephrase that question. <laughs> you look like the hunch crutch of Notre Dame. Finishing off page five. Of what? My list of instructions. <laughs> what have you got there? Hmm? It's his suitcase. Oh, God, I thought that was something you were taking to the dustbin. <laughs> Cover it up. Don't let anybody see it. I'll develop his spending muscle if it's the last thing I do. <laughs> I hope he's bringing some money with him. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Boy, is he bringing some money with him. <laughs> doing? What are you walking like that for? You're getting an old man. 
Listen, if we're that old, why do we have to have two rooms? We're having two rooms. Oh. Come on, we, let's go if we're going. Yes. You can drive. Oh. <laughs> Look after it, Granville. It's me, it's me life's work. Just keep a friendly smile on your face for the customers and something uh, solid and reliable to uh, belt the shoplifters with. <laughs> oh, can you pick them up? I'm past it. <laughs> Do you think you've pulled something? <laughs> You, I hope. I wouldn't want to be going through all this for nothing. <laughs> oh. Oh. That government squeeze is beginning to bite in the <laughs> economy. Don't forget Mrs. Duckinfield's tuber brown loaves. Engraved on me heart is Mrs. Duckinfield's two brown loaves. <laughs> hey, don't forget to lock up properly tonight. All right, all right. You know, cracker credit. Oh! Hey, 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 all right. Come on, come on. Where are we going? Come on. <laughs> right, then. We finally got you away from that damn shop. Well, where are we heading? The Dales? The Lakes? The Coast? <laughs> what are we stopping here for? Yeah, you wanted a hotel, didn't you? Not here. Well, what, what's wrong with here? This is a very nice class of hotel, this. I'll tell you what's wrong with here. A, it's not a very nice class of hotel, and B, it's only a few hundred yards from your damn shop. Oh, no, no nonsense. It must be hundreds of a hundreds of yards from the shop. We, we don't want to be driving all night, do we? Anyway, supposing a Granville suddenly needs me back there. I'd go straight back home, only I dare face me mother. Oh, no. Come on, we'll have a nice meal, then later on, if it stays fine, we might fancy a little late night's a stroll round your bedroom. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with a bent old man. <laughs> Look at you. Straighten yourself up. Oh. She's coming. She's coming. I've made a breakthrough into adult pastimes. <laughs> Farewell, model aircraft. <laughs> oh, I may now never finish that battleship. <laughs> oh, well, that's, that's me lost forever to scouting circles. No more long, lonely walks with me tranny trying to pretend I'm clued into the music scene. <laughs> me milk woman's coming. <laughs> oh, my God, she's coming. I mean, what do you say to an ex-married person of wide experience? I mean, you know, what have we got in common besides a daily pinter? She may be overflowing with the milk of human kindness, but suppose I lose me bottle. <laughs> Gazing at in the moonlight with your soulful eyes. Oh, yeah, yeah, just looking, looking for nightingales, my love. Nightingales? On a main road in traffic like that? Well, you never know, so some of them might, might be commuting. 
<laughs> it's some other kind of bird. No, it's not. Look. Oh, I... it's your damn shop. Please. You're still fretting about that flaming shop. Well, you can go back to your shop. I'm going home. No, 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 you don't go home. I paid for the night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> What are you doing here? <laughs> Not quite as well as you're doing here. <laughs> mm, wait a minute, I'll, I'll be back in a minute. Um, I've left something boiling over. I'll bet you have. <laughs> it's no good, I can't face my mother. Oh. Besides, how can I leave you here all crippled and twisted like no, this? I know. I'll sit up with you tonight. Oh. And tomorrow morning you're going straight to the doctor's. Shh, <laughs> oh, shh. Who's he got in there? And then the milk woman. God, is it that time already? <laughs> oh, that's it, stuff. Something to warm her up. Where is she? It's all right for you. You've ruined my evening. Oh, you're too young. Where's Nurse Gladys? She's in the lavvy. Oh. Anyway, why is she sitting up all night with you, any anyway? road? Because she thinks I'm a useless orca cripple, you see. Little does she realise the miraculous cure I'm about to undergo when I produce the magic key to unlock myself from this lower abdominal strangler. Yeah. <laughs> the magic key, that's... <laughs> Where did I put that magic key? Well, I can't, I can't find the key. Granville, I've, lo I've lost the key. <laughs> <laughs> But, but you're a nurse. It wouldn't take five minutes. All I would need would be a, a local anaesthetic, like you sitting on me chest. I'm not performing illegal operations on mean old men in the middle of the night. Wear it and suffer. Look, I've giggled. <laughs> I've got some uh, lovely little hacksaw blades. They're, they're a new line. They're just right for removing their money belts. Don't risk it. I might be tempted to cut you off without a shilling. <laughs> Nasty. Oh. Oh, that's better. Oh. Now then, if I could just uh, slip this back in here without anybody... <laughs> no. Oh, look at that. It's as good as new. <laughs> Which is more than can be said for my anatomy. <laughs> I've set myself back a few weeks for Gladys. Failed to explore an inviting new commodity, as they say in the grocery trade. Still, it's an ill wind that blows nobody any good. I caught our Granville just in time before he committed himself irrevocably to northern dairies. <laughs> help worrying about that lad you don't like to think of anybody that age ruining his life by having more fun than you 